All right, so this is 11.4. This is the last section for chapter 11. This is treating infectious diseases. So uh, no vaccine has yet been developed that can prevent colds. And the reason being is because the cold virus keeps on mutating. So every year it's different. So as fast as someone tries to develop a vaccine for the common cold, a new cold virus appears. And so usually when you get a cold, your body can heal itself within about a week, but sometimes the body does need some help. So there are over-the-counter drugs that can be taken. So these are, you can find at the grocery store and pharmacies and so on. Over-the-counter drugs, that just means that these are medications that are sold without a doctor's prescription. So you don't need a doctor's prescription to buy them. You can just go to the store and buy them. And usually people try over-the-counter drugs to relieve or treat symptoms. Um, they're sold without a doctor's prescription and they relieve symptoms like fevers and headaches um, and other symptoms that accompany colds. But they do not kill the virus or the viruses that cause the cold. So antibiotics are different. Um, from those over-the-counter medications. These are drugs that fight bacterial infections by either killing bacteria or preventing them from reproducing. If symptoms of infection continue, your doctor may prescribe an antibiotic. Um, so again, antibiotics will either kill the bacteria or prevent them from reproducing. And each antibiotic is effective against specific types of bacteria. Now keep in mind, antibody, antibiotics, they do not help with viral infections. So viruses, virus infections are not treated with antibiotics. It's only bacterial infections that are treated with um, antibiotics. Um, so when, if you have a cold or strep throat, you need to know whether or not the infection is bacterial or viral. So viruses cause like common colds, the flu, sore throats, coughs, and sinus infections. And since antibiotics don't work against viruses, the best thing to do is get rest, drink plenty of fluids. You can take over-the-counter drugs to relieve the symptoms. Since bacteria cause things like strep throat and pneumonia, that's when an antibiotic well, might be effective in treating those, um, those uh, illnesses. All right, so here we have um, Alexander, Sir Alexander Fleming. Um, so um, he discovered, um, he was the first to discover penicillin. So a blue mold called penicillium Notatum became famous after Sir Alexander Fleming of Scotland discovered it by accident in 1929. He noticed some mold colonies growing in a dish of bacteria he was studying. And there was no bacteria growing around each mold colony. So he concluded that the mold was producing a substance that killed the bacteria. And that led to the, his discovery of the penicillin, the first antibiotic. And today, scientists can develop antibiotics from fungi, mold, and bacteria. So if we look at this uh, Petri dish here, um, scientists test antibiotics by growing bacterial colonies and introducing small disks of antibiotics to the bacteria. So we can see all this region here containing bacteria. These are the two disks placed in there. And we can see that the mold is killing off the bacteria. So it's like there's no bacteria around here. There's no bacteria around here. So scientists can determine the effectiveness of antibiotics by measuring the size of that no growth zone. So some problems with antibiotics um, is that like the video just said, some people demand antibiotics to fight every cold, every sore throat they have, which is not a good idea. One, they can kill harmful and helpful bacteria. 
So your body contains many helpful bacteria that aid in things like digestion. So antibiotics will kill these as well. And then they can also cause symptoms like upset stomach, diarrhea, um, vaginal yeast infection. They can also cause side effects. Some people develop allergies to antibiotics, like we just saw in the video, and um, some report symptoms um, like an itchy rash. Um, if there's any symptoms like that, it should always be reported to your daughter, doctor, <laughs> to your do doctor. Um, overuse can help the development of resistant bacteria. So like that video showed, bacteria can build resistance to an antibiotic and then the antibiotic stops working against that bacteria. All right, so this diagram here is just showing this is the bacterium, this is the antibiotic, um, showing covering the bacterium. And here we see one bacterium here that is resistant to that bacterium. So antibiotics will kill all of these non-resistant bacteria, but this one here um, has a mutation that allows some bacteria to survive and reproduce. So now if this survivor continues to reproduce like so, a new strain of bacteria has developed and that old antibiotic is now unable to kill them. Um, so when taking an antibiotic, it usually kills bacteria over a period of 7 to 10 days. And regularly occurring mutations mean that some of the bacteria are immune to the antibiotic. These bacteria survive and reproduce, forming a new antibiotic-resistant strain of infection. So it's important to take all of the antibiotic that the doctor prescribes to... Um, to make sure that um, the back, all of the bacteria are basically killed. Um, if the resistant bacteria does develop, they're often called superbugs. And when these superbugs reproduce, the new strain of the disease begins to infect many people. And people can die from infections that used to be able, that used to be treatable because the new sub superbug now is resistant to one or sometimes many antibiotics. So even if you are a healthy person who's never taken an antibiotic, you could become infected with a superbug from other people. And that's why bacterial resistance is such a threat and such a problem now. So the best way to help avoid this is by using antibiotics only when necessary and following the doctor's directions for their use and completing that whole dosage. All right, there's two videos here on antibiotic resistance that you can watch. The links are included here on this slide. Using antibiotics safely, um, drug reactions account for like one in five hospital admissions. Nine out of 10 patients, they don't take their medications properly. For example, they may be combining medicines, which can produce effects different from those produced when the medicine is taken alone or it may produce side effects. So it's important to take medications safely. So using antibiotics safely, um, asking questions about precautions to take when using a medicine, any side effects, um, especially if you're taking two or more medicines at the same time, ask if they can be taken together safely. Um, read the label, how to take it, when to take it. Sometimes it has to be taken with food, other times it has to be on an empty stomach. Um, also, to make sure to check expiration dates and discard any medication that's past the expiry date. And taking drugs properly, meaning follow the directions on the label until you have taken all of the medication. If you don't take that whole dosage that's prescribed, it can lead to the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Um, handling over-the-counter drugs, they're generally considered safe to use, but there are risks if you treat yourself without professional advice. So you shouldn't assume you have a specific disease and then choose a medication to treat it um, because the same symptom can result from one of several diseases and you may be treating the wrong ailment. So avoid self-diagnosis. Uh, make sure you go see a doctor.
um, and get a correct diagnosis. Okay, when choosing over-the-counter drugs, um, read the ca labels carefully, find out what symptoms it treats, um, what symptom do you have, you're going to look for something that will treat the symptom you have, for example, a headache, read the warnings and list of side effects, some medications can make you drowsy, if you take one of these, make sure you're not driving or operating heavy machinery and so on, um, so make sure you have somebody that can drive you. And use exactly the amount of medication prescribed and use it for the recommended length of time. All right, so that's the end of chapter 11. So here are the chapter 11.4 um, questions as well as the chapter 11 review questions.